Today is the launch of the Tides of War. This is Battlefield 5's post-launch support system and DICE's way of giving players new content. It's built around themes, events and challenges and it's separated into chapters, the first of which is called Overture. In this video I'm going to explain how the Tides of War works, how you unlock the new weapons, what the different events reward you with and in general just give you a rundown on what DICE is planning for Battlefield 5. I'll also include my opinion at the end as well. I'm not entirely in favour of what DICE is doing at the moment and this video comes at the right time because DICE just figured out their server unlock issues that came along yesterday when the Tides of War kind of soft launched. You couldn't unlock certain things which again is another bug for Battlefield 5 but they've just worked it out so this video really does come at the right time. So then, let's start off with some basics. The Tides of War is a journey through World War II based on a series of chapters which are themed around certain parts of the war. These multi-week chapters include content like maps, weapons, vehicles, cosmetics and even more, all of which are available to every single player of Battlefield 5 for free. Each chapter also contains weekly events. This screenshot on the screen now shows you what a weekly event can look like and you're tasked with traversing this tree of challenges. Pick a path, work your way along and if you complete all the challenges in your path you'll be rewarded with an item at the end. This image shows week one of the Overture chapter and it's focused around the attrition system and fortifications. So most of the challenges will link into those topics. The reward is the VGO MMG for the support class, what you might know as the Vickers K machine gun. The reward at the end of the week is the same for everybody, but it's up to you which path you take to unlock it. The other two new weapons coming in this chapter, the Cells Larder 1906 and the AG M42 semi-auto rifle are the rewards for completing week 3 and weeks 4 challenges. Now one major concern players have had is that these weekly events appear to only offer the reward if you complete the challenges within the week, potentially time gating the weapons and putting players with a busy personal life at a disadvantage. Now DICE has clarified if you don't complete the weekly event and all of the challenges there will be other opportunities in the future to unlock the reward by other playable means, although the team hasn't gone into specifics at this point what those means actually are. Within each chapter there will also be a new list of assignments for you to complete, although these aren't imperative or required at all. They're unique to the chapter that is currently active and they consist of a group of tasks where you need to fulfill some or all of the requirements to get your reward. These are very very similar to the assignments that we've been playing through at the moment. They are just themed around the chapter, give you more to do and of course give you more rewards. The Tides of War also introduces the chapter rank to Battlefield 5. As you earn XP during any Tides of War chapter, doing whatever you want in the game that earns you XP, you'll be working towards increasing your chapter rank. Each time you rank up your chapter rank, you'll earn a reward. These consist mainly of cosmetic items for weapons, your soldiers and vehicles. Items like soldier outfits, full weapon skin sets, dog tags and special assignments that grant you company coins. The aim for you is to reach the maximum rank of the chapter and there you will be rewarded with something special. Now many of these chapter rank rewards are unique to the chapter so if you're a collector of cosmetics then you'll want to be playing a lot during the chapter. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, chapters also bring high level content such as maps, weapons, vehicles and game modes. Chapter 1 Overture brings the new Panzerstorm multiplayer map, the practice range, the last Tiger War story and vehicle cosmetic customization. This gives you new surrounding content to use as you work to increase your chapter rank, unlocking rewards in a new environment. The idea is to keep players engaged and invested in their Battlefield 5 journey. Chapter 2, called Lightning Strikes, includes two time exclusive game modes, Squad Conquest and the return of the Rush game mode 
and the introduction of the co-op game mode, Combined Arms. And Chapter 3 is called Trial by Fire, that introduces the Firestorm Battle Royale mode, alongside a new multiplayer location in Greece, another co-op mission, and a further new game mode for multiplayer as well. And all of these chapters will include new weapons and vehicles where appropriate. These chapters will take you on a journey through World War II, and of course the journey doesn't stop at Chapter 3, it will continue on for the lifetime of Battlefield 5. It's going to bring lots of different elements to keep the game fresh and exciting, hopefully. Of course, right now we can only take what DICE has told us, and hope they deliver on it. It has been a rough start for the game, but here's to hoping the road is smoother ahead, and the team does deliver on its promises of a fleshed out live service. Taking things back to Chapter 1 for just a second, I've got a little bit more detail here for you. I've got a list of the rewards that you'll be getting for ranking up your chapter rank. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the three new weapons coming in this chapter, those are rewards for completing the weekly chapter events, and your chapter rank is being reserved for a bunch of cosmetic items. Now, there are 20 ranks in total for this chapter, and the chapter lasts around four weeks. So here's to hoping DICE knows how to stagger the progression this time around. So many players reached rank 50 for their career rank within a few days of the game launching, so I hope DICE has redone the math for the Tides of War. In the rewards list, there is one emblem, three dog tags, two plane decals, six full weapon skin sets, one full soldier outfit set, four special assignments, and four vehicle body skins. That totals 21 different rewards if you reach rank 20. Two items are rewarded at rank 20, whereas every other rank rewards you with one item. It's nice to see, actually, that DICE is rewarding players with full weapon skin sets and full soldier outfit sets, rather than separating each part of those and rewarding them separately. The airlifts handed out with the Deluxe Edition, for me, are a massive disappointment, only rewarding two full weapon skin sets in total, but each part of those weapon skins is split into a different weekly airlift. It seems DICE learned from their mistake there and are setting things right with the Tides of War. I think the most important thing to remember here is that the Tides of War is free to every single player of Battlefield 5. All items included in the chapter, whether that be a new map, a new weapon, a new game mode, or all of the cosmetics, are free to all players. At some point in the future, DICE will introduce a premium currency called the Battlefield Currency. I know, it's the most boring name ever, but that can be used to buy cosmetic items outside of the Tides of War, directly from the Armoury. But Battlefield Currency won't infect the rest of the game. It's purely for cosmetic items, and it can only be used in the Armoury. And now for my opinion. The Tides of War being free is a huge bonus to every player of Battlefield 5. No more paygating content like maps, weapons, game modes and vehicles. That's a huge step forward for the franchise because everybody plays together. And when the update drops, it won't cost you anything to launch the game and experience the new content that DICE has created. It's a marked improvement over the premium system that Battlefield has used for the previous few Battlefield games, and I'm honestly very, very glad to see the back of it. However, there are some elements of the Tides of War that at the moment I'm not quite sure on. Firstly, it's kind of complicated to work out. There's a chapter rank that rewards you, assignments that reward you, special assignments that you unlock as rewards that then reward you for completing them, weekly events that reward you, there's lots of different places that you can earn rewards. The level of rewarding is brilliant, but it's not easy to understand at first glance, which I think puts DICE at a disadvantage with newer players. I understand the premise, tying rewards into different experiences and activities, but there's so much of that spread across so many different locations, I think it's a little bit confusing to work out what rewards come from what section. Secondly, the chapter events rewarding weapons. DICE has said if you fail to complete the chapter event, you won't get the weapon right away and you will have to wait for another opportunity to do so. My question is, why? Why can't the chapter event not just be left open-ended, as previous weapon assignments in Battlefield games have been in the past? Why do they need to be time-gated at all. Surely leaving the chapter event open after the week is over for players to complete at their leisure is a better scenario. 
That way players don't feel like they're being punished for not playing the game and doing other things with their spare time. It seems to me like a big oversight from the development team. I think it's a case of tunnel vision, where they fail to see how this system might be taken from a player's point of view. For DICE, these chapter events allow them to control what players do in the game and move them from place to place throughout World War II. But for players, this time gating becomes annoying if they're unable to commit the time to unlock something that they really want, especially weapons, arguably one of the hottest pieces of content when they come to Battlefield games. I think DICE needs to change their approach here and simply leave the chapter events open-ended, allowing players to complete the challenges at their own pace and unlock rewards without feeling that pressure. And lastly, I don't think it was the greatest idea to dump all the major content at the beginning of a chapter. The new map, the single player war story, the practice range and vehicle cosmetics. The entire live service system is built on the idea that content is drip fed through a chapter or a season. And what DICE has done here is return to a season pass system and dumped all the major content in one go, which has shown in the past to be popular with players initially, but then you see a drop in player activity because they consumed all the content and there's nothing else there for a few months. DICE has taken the weapons and integrated them into a drip feed system, which I guess will keep players returning, but they could have gone a step further by spacing out those larger chunks of content across the weeks. Maybe started with the Panzerstorm map on day one, the War Story the next week, the Practice Range the week after, and then Vehicle Cosmetics at the end of the chapter. Just a thought from my point of view, it kind of seems like they've taken their Season Pass model and tried to fit it into a live service. You should either do a live service or do a Season Pass. Don't try and combine the two. But there you are. That's the Tides of War for Battlefield 5 and how the chapters are going to work. I hope you've got a better understanding of the system now, and perhaps the biggest takeaway is that all this content will be free. I don't think you can say fairer than that. Let me know how you're feeling down below in the comments section. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you've got notifications switched on. That way you won't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. A big thank you for watching today, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.